thank you uh, for joining uh, this session. So I'm Clement uh, Boudreau. I'm working uh, at the Edge, and uh, we are helping uh, the uh, hotel industry uh, to uh, leverage uh, their, uh, their product. And we are a SaaS company, so that's why uh, having uh, such features like uh, open telemetry and the looks good to me stack is important for us. So let's start. So in few words, before going uh, deeper, what's its open telemetry uh, all about? So obviously, if I mention you that it's a specification, you will not uh, uh, understand uh, really uh, uh, easily what it's all about. So to simplify, it's just gRPC services uh, specified uh, on their uh, GitHub uh, website and also uh, inside the uh, open telemetry uh, uh, website. So inside this um, specification, so there is uh, one protobuf services for each single. So we will find uh, semantic conventions, uh, which are really handy. Uh, it's like having string string correlation like in a map. So obviously, if you are running an application uh, with different runtimes, you will uh, you will be able to have the same dashboard and the same telemetry, which is uh, very important. And uh, the very last one is as soon as you have uh, services and instrumentation, uh, you need to have uh, collectors and exporters. And it can be embedded in the application or outside the NC to the um, open telemetry collector uh, contrib tools. So let's start up the demo. <coughs> so before I, I run the demo uh, locally, so I forgot to mention that you will find a QR code. Uh, you can scan it. And for this one, you will find the uh, Docker Compose one you can run on your uh, laptop. So actually, it's actually running on my uh, laptop to make it uh, simple. And the use case is really uh, handy. So it's Sorry, I'm really bad at naming things. So you will find that there is a curl script which call uh, the client uh, web API application to create users, uh, to get random users, and to get users. So in the end, we will have uh, two XX HTTP status codes, and not found errors, and uh, at some point we'll have internal server errors. Okay, and the client is really to me is just calling uh, the. Uh, uh, web API service, which depends on the Postgres databases, uh, database, sorry, and uh, we are only storing and getting the users from the, the dependency. So, and the first part is only uh, open telemetry uh, collector contrib tool, but deployed differently. You will see that there is a gateway and so on. So basically, the first part is really uh, interesting because you can observe uh, the telemetry, uh, um, uh, the all the, the uh, the signals sent to our backend, and that's why it's really important to talk about open telemetry in the backend. And Grafana Labs uh, play a, a good role over here because without it, we can't do uh, anything. So you need to visualize the data uh, with Grafana, and you need backends like Loki, Tempo, and Mimir. All right. So that's all for uh, that uh, part. So now. Uh, once we have set up uh, the stack, it becomes important to uh, focus about the uh, errors, for instance. So I'm going to introduce the uh, red uh, method, which is, which means for rate, error, and durations. And with these only three metrics, you are able to have a, a quick overview about the health of your application. And now, if you would like to go deeper and deeper, you can do it by analyzing, for instance, you can see per endpoint and per HTTP status on each panel, uh, the rights uh, focusing only on errors and focusi uh, focusing only on durations. So it's pretty handy to see that uh, having a quick overview for all your application and for all uh, runtime or uh, languages uh, behind. The problem is here we have at some point 10% of errors, something like this, 8 or 10% of errors, but we are not able to see the root cause. So now if we have logs, could you guess the problem is from the client application point of view, you have internal server errors. And if I go to the details, I have an empty root cause or something which is not uh, really re relevant. So at that, at, at that point, it's really important to jump to the other component. So this is a small application, but as soon as you will have more dependencies, you have to jump uh, to the next logs, and it's very uh, painful. So now I'm going to introduce uh, starting back from the metrics. You can do better by using the Grafana uh, data links feature, which is very interesting because combined with open telemetry, you already define your service name. You already define some metadata so that you can correlate easily from metrics to 
traces. And over here, the true problems, even if uh, the error occurs inside the clients, the real cause is that the, the table, bad table, does not exist. Oops. <laughs> so now we have the root cause, and it's pretty easy uh, to get the root cause only uh, with uh, one or two clicks. All right. So I have my uh, page to have the uh, overview about the errors, and in two clicks, I can have uh, the, the diagnostic. So um, this part is really uh, uh, handy for performance because I, I showed you before um, the red method for errors and duration. And talking about duration, you can do the same tricks by using um, uh, data links by to filter only relevant traces. All right. And over here, what we can see with uh, the node graph visualization, so it's another uh, panel and another visualization from Grafana, you will see the same trace, but differently, and you can quickly identify that calling the slow dependency is not good at all. Uh, we have to dig uh, uh, a bit more to find uh, the, the, the root cause and the hotspot. All right. So to sum up, uh, uh, I used uh, the simplest approach uh, about uh, tracing. So let's move on to the tracing part. So for this part, I'm using the uh, parent-based and one or t uh, ten percent uh, strategy. So it means that ten percent of the time, one or ten percent of the time, we will record all the traces for all the application. And it's very important to keep uh, full traces because if you did not choose uh, parent-based, you will have partial traces, like only for service or only for client. And it's not relevant because you will miss uh, the opportunity to do the root cause analysis. So at least to keep um, uh, things uh, very uh, simple, uh, you can start uh, with it. Uh, at, at that point, you need to uh, get some errors and correlate from metrics. If you see that you have uh, errors from the metrics, but you don't, you, you are not having errors in the traces, maybe it's due to the head sampling and it's another uh, corner case. So that's why you have to increase uh, depending your needs and the status of your uh, architecture. But uh, you have to think about filtering useless dependencies. Uh, for that demo, we have not uh, that much uh, dependencies, but uh, as, f as soon as you will have more and more de dependencies, you will have more span. And um, that's why it's important to filter uh, those uh, useless uh, when you are using automatic instrumentation. And uh, I mean, if you are not having uh, good uh, results, meaning that you start by 1%, you don't see any traces. So uh, like me as a developer, <laughs> you just say, OK, now I would like to instrument everything. <laughs> and uh, the problem is that no sampling at all can be costly. Uh, if you uh, uh, don't pay close attention to your uh, bill, it can be a problem. Or if you have uh, a series maintaining the observability stack, it can be uh, a nightmare. <laughs> so. What you can do uh, when you have to optimize P95 or P99 uh, uh, use cases, you can simply uh, start before uh, doing premature optimization, start to observe your uh, pipeline. And that's why uh, Open Telemetry and Mimir and Grafana uh, is good at. Because over here, I'm using the Open Telemetry uh, dashboard to monitor my pipeline. So the first part is the uh, throughput of my application. So it's close to 10 or uh, 20 uh, requests, uh, 12, uh, sorry, uh, requests per second. But, oops. But here is the uh, span. So uh, I was using the uh, open telemetry uh, collector contrib as a gateway. So I have the metrics in place. And as uh, we can see, uh, we still have 10 times, 8 or 10 times more span that our application is, on, is handling. And uh, we have few dependencies. So if we increase the number of dependencies, we'll increase the factor. So that's why uh, it can be complex to uh, monitor the, the, the full traces over here. Okay. So it's uh, approximately in that in that case eight times. So now how we can do uh, better? So for such use cases, when you are focusing about uh, high durations, you can filter uh, spans. Uh, you can keep traces. Uh, higher than 100 milliseconds, for instance, and you can completely uh, keep only errors and exclude false positives. I mentioned before that the 4xx errors are not uh, useful at all in your case, so you can say I would like to keep errors, but I would like to exclude this uh, one. So if you uh, uh, clone uh, the project, you will find the Open Telemetry uh, Collector Country 
contrib uh, configuration uh, to do so. Um, so a quick uh, comparison about the head sampling and tail sampling strategy. So I highly recommend to start uh, really easily uh, with the head sampling. Uh, if you are a small company or if you have small application and few uh, dependencies, it can uh, uh, bring uh, some opportunities to solve uh, the first problems at the lower cost. Uh, as opposed to the tail sampling where you have a better control because the configuration, the configuration is now centralized. But uh, and you can uh, add uh, more uh, strategy, uh, like I mentioned before, uh, with a higher uh, uh, resiliency. But it's another component we have to maintain. So it brings complexity. So you have to compare uh, those approach and integrate uh, thanks to the uh, to thanks to Mimia and uh, Open Telemetry dashboards when uh, it, uh, it it has the benefits for you. Okay. So now let's switch to the uh, live demo. Uh, for that demo, I started by saying uh, uh, no sampling at all. So you can find the hotel underscore traces underscore sampler arcs. And if you indicate one, it means that you are uh, in no using sampling at all. It's 100%. Okay. And because it's Dumi application, I already configured uh, failure ratio and latency ratio. And you will see that uh, it's a worst case. You know, uh, when the application is starting, you will have the error and the latency, and after that, it will apply the, uh, apply the probability. And uh, you will, we will see that we will keep uh, the traces as the relevant traces, but at uh, through a lower cost. So let's move on. So over here, this is the uh, dashboard uh, I created. Um, the, the Docker Compose is uh, actually uh, running on my uh, on my machine. And over here, you can see that uh, by clicking over here, I can directly uh, go to the uh, server error traces. And when I click on it, I will I'll, I will have all the relevant traces, meaning that the service name is equal to the client. I'm really interested in uh, getting errors over here, but mm, uh, five XX errors, all right? So yeah, I ran the demo just before, so that's why it does not give the expected result. But when filtering for the last 30 minutes, I have those traces, and I have two because there is uh, two instances of the service, so that's why we have uh, those errors. And now if I uh, if I analyze, if I'm gonna analyzing these uh, traces, I will see that I have uh, the problem that the uh, bad table does not exist just over here in the event. Yes, error relation bad table does not exist. All right, so at least we have that part. And since since it uh, displayed both, we can uh, quickly see. Uh, the problem and over here it's not calling the slow dependency but it's my due to the uh, call start uh, of my application so that's why uh, it highlights uh, this part and what you can see is inclusive time and exclusive time so when it's closed uh, it means that there is a hotspot there all right um, and now let's see uh, the other graph because here we are uh, interested in uh, uh, monitoring or apps but but now <laughs> Uh, because we are a good developer, we fixed everything. Now the throughput is better. And because we are filtering everything, it's less than 2%. So basically, there is nothing uh, outside uh, the backend. All right. So um, that's all. So now we can go to the conclusion. Um, sorry. So as a conclusion, the observability backend with the looks good to me uh, stack is uh, pretty good. Uh, so for logs, I forgot to mention, I use two uh, different approaches. Uh, like for the OTLP, uh, I use the most recent one, but you, you, uh, logs is quite recent uh, over the OTLP protocol. So I use uh, the, the one that I, where I send directly the, the, um, the logs through the gRPC services. It brings good results, but I, I started to uh, scrap the file uh, like the classic way. 
and by uh, using the open telemetry uh, collector contrib agent. Okay, and it works great. Uh, keep in mind that for short life task, uh, it's pretty handy because you are not. Uh, uh, if you are not able to put a sidecar or an agent uh, collocated to your uh, to your task, it can be problematic. So that's why sending directly the telemetry can be uh, good. Uh, and Mimir, to me, it's really a masterpiece because you already uh, you do not have to do a premature optimization. So that's why it's become important to uh, first measure and it starts with uh, metrics. Uh, with Mimir, you can uh, with open telemetry you can follow the red method, which brings good results and the uh, uh, overview of the application. And uh, you can also monitor open telemetry collector contrib uh, with Mimir, which is uh, quite good. Uh, for Tempo, it's really handy to use, but there is some uh, traps uh, at some point you would like to avoid. And uh, that's why it's become important to uh, keep things simple. So if you are a, a little company, if, if you have a small application, don't hesitate to start with health sampling. If you are a more complex uh, strategy, start small with few number of applications uh, to give you the time to master all the uh, health sampling and, uh, and, uh, and others. All right. So I hope you enjoy. So thank you, uh, thank you very much uh, for that part. If you ask, if you have a uh, few questions, don't hesitate to uh, uh, to uh, ask me at the uh, ask uh, the expert uh, boot. And uh, I'm really open to uh, uh, Meetup, Brown Bag Lodge, and so on. So thank you again. <laughs>